I took this old disgusting fish tank and turned it into this, a now thriving aquarium with a huge clownfish in 21 days. Now I'm going to continue my rewrite of the Finding Nemo plot. We left off last video adding in coral our female clownfish. It's now time to find a male to pair her with, so it's time to head to the fish store. I went to the same fish store as last video and was only able to find baby clownfish. Looks like they haven't got any bigger clownfish in since the last time I was here. And because coral is close to full size, I'm worried a smaller clownfish wouldn't last in a tank with her. Clownfish are notoriously territorial and will fight other clownfish. And we don't want to start a fish fight club in our tank. A smaller clown would probably get bullied way too much, so I'm going to need to keep searching to find a bigger male to pair coral with. I remember seeing these two clownfish on my first trip to the fish gallery. So I'm going to drive over there and hope they still have them. When I got to the fish room, I first saw these snowflake clownfish. They look a little bigger than the fish at the last store and could be a possibility. But then I saw them, the two clowns from the last video. I tried to determine which one was the male of the two. When figuring out which is a male between clownfish, it is typically the smaller ones out of the group. And this one is just slightly smaller than the other. So I got him bagged up and headed back home. I showed Coral the male I had picked out for her. Hopefully she likes him. It's time to get him acclimated so I can add him to the tank. While I acclimate the new fish, I fed Coral so hopefully she wouldn't be aggressive as soon as I dropped the other fish into the tank. After he was done acclimating, it was time to add our new male to the tank. As soon as he hit the water, they instantly started swimming together in the wave maker. So far, no signs of aggression. We aren't out of the woods just yet, but I think they should be just fine together. Only time will tell. After a few hours, I came back to see the two of them swimming together still. That's a good sign. It's now time to feed them and see if the male would eat. And once the food hit the water, they instantly went crazy for it. It's good to know that the new fish is healthy. His name is obviously going to be Marlin. When I got back home, I saw the two of them swimming paired up in the back of the tank. I tried to start recording but wasn't fast enough, and as soon as they saw me, they were ready to eat again. But I saw they had made this nesting spot in the back of the tank. I was hoping to be able to record them swimming together, but I guess that'll have to wait. So I fed them and left them alone. And now that it was night, I was able to catch them both back there sleeping in their new spot. It looks like they paired successfully. So it's been about a week now and they have been thriving so far, but the tank is starting to get some algae on the glass and the rock. It may be time for a cleanup crew for the tank. I went ahead and tested the water's nitrate level again and it's looking good at 7.5. I've still been slowly lowering the salinity of the tank down to what it is recommended for them to lay eggs and it's finally there at 1.020. The next day, I went back to the fish store to look for some invertebrates to help keep the tank clean. I decided on getting a peppermint shrimp, because he will eat the aptasia I found in the first few days on the rock and hopefully stop the spread. I also wanted to get a couple hermit crabs so they could eat any fish food that fell to the sand bed, as well as some snails to eat the algae off the glass and the rock. Then I saw these things. They're called flame scallops. I've never seen them before. But they have spots on them that flash blue. Maybe I'll eventually get one of these for the tank. But for now, it's time to get all these guys acclimated before they get to work. The first one to go in is the peppermint shrimp. He looks pale now, but his color should come back once he's settled. I'll name him Dave. His main job is to eat the aptasia before it takes over the rock. For now, he swam straight to the heater to hide. Next, I'll add in the snails, whose main job is to eat the algae on the glass and rock. I'll name them Gary, Jerry, and Larry. And now the hermit crabs, whose main job is to eat all of the leftover food. Their names will be Stan and Steve. It took a while for any movement from these guys, but the first ones to move were the snails. Hopefully they'll find this rock. Soon after, one of the hermit crabs found himself in the nest of the clownfish and started running out of there.
The other hermit still hasn't moved. What do you mean there's nobody home? A while later, I had came back to see that the other hermit had moved and was roaming around the sand so all the invertebrates were now moving. The snails had made their way up to the top of the glass and the other hermit is hiding in a hole on the rock. Glad to see he got away from the clownfish. The shrimp still didn't want to come down from his spot on the heater. The tank still needs something for the clownfish to help encourage egg laying. I did some research and found that a clay flower pot or tile is a good flat surface to give the clownfish somewhere to lay their eggs. So I went to Home Depot. I found this clay dish, but I think I'll go with the pot so they have a cave to stay in. When I got home, I added in the new flower pot and they wanted nothing to do with it, swimming to the other side of the tank. They just need some time to get used to it being in there. The hermit crabs were still out roaming and now the snails had made their way to the back corner of the tank. I looked around and couldn't find the shrimp though. Until I noticed he had found a hole in the front of the rock. The clowns were finally getting closer to the pot. Hopefully they'll like it. And later that night, there they were, inside the flower pot. It looks like they are choosing it as their home. The next morning, Dave the shrimp didn't want to be on camera. And the hermit crabs were both doing their jobs keeping the sand clean. The same can't be said about Dave though. I don't think he wants to do his job. The clownfish seemed to be enjoying their new pot in the tank. Marlin was trying to keep the inside of it clean. When I got back home, it was time to check on Dave's work and see if he had eaten any aptasia that was on the rocks. I couldn't find any on the rock, so finally he had gotten to work. Then I noticed one of the hermit crabs was eating a snail. I guess the snail had fallen from the glass. These astrea snails don't have the ability to flip themselves back over if they end up on their back. So the hermit crab took advantage and will probably be wearing a new shell soon. The shrimp has gotten a lot of its color back by now and is looking a lot better. And now the snails are finally cleaning the front glass, but tomorrow I may fully clean them off myself. Before bed, I checked on the tank and I noticed a snail had moved into the pump's outflow. So I immediately grabbed him and moved him back to the sand bed. The next morning, Dave was out bobbing and weaving around. He had molted overnight. The snails had made their way back to the top of the glass and an empty shell was on the sand bed, but no sign of hermit crabs. The clownfish seemed to be doing well though. Hopefully the crabs are out when I get back. And when I got back, there he was, the crab that had stolen the shell. Marlin and Coral had gotten along very well over these past few weeks. Hopefully this is a sign that they will lay eggs eventually. But in the meantime, the tank is looking a little bit dirty, so I'm going to go ahead and clean it up a little bit. And there we have it. Nice clean glass. That's going to be it for this video. Please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.